All right, welcome back. Uh, in this uh, demo, or uh, in this part of this demo, what we are going to do, we are now configuring the API gateway to to put the endpoint on top of our lambda function so the the callers uh, can access our lambda function through uh, through the uh, through the api endpoint which is a normal best practice while you are developing uh, your your code in the in the aws environment so let's go and uh, go to the uh, AWS environment. So I've already built my Lambda function. We have discussed it in the previous video. Now I'm going to open the API gateway. So in the API gateway, you can see we have a new experience. That, that's another good thing from the AWS. They encourage you to use the, the changes they are making and putting a lot of efforts to, to bring to the customer. Uh, and uh, there's no harm, especially to try these things. And if you don't like them, you can, you still have the the option to revert back to, to, the, to the old experience. Same, uh, many features are available from the testing perspective. Once you open the console, you generally find again uh, in, in different services that uh, the, the new changes or new features are available underneath those. Uh, those section so it's always a good practice to to try these features to learn uh, in the in the dev environment and then sometime it really provide you great solution to your problem which you are struggling with uh, without pro uh, putting any additional cost so that that's a, a side note what we'll do we'll just go to our api and you can see uh, Actually, my screen size is a bit uh, small in uh, in this demo. So what I will do, I'll just close if I can. Yeah, I can close this part. And now I think we are good. So what I'm going to do, there are different type of APIs you can create or, or the endpoints. You can see we have the HTTP uh, API. We have web sockets. We have REST API, a big uh, uh, area in the, in the microservices development. Uh, and REST API private, which where we are not, we don't want that to be exposed to to the to the public. So you can see my uh, AWS provide all sort of API endpoints to to us, right? So in this demo, what we will do because we are going to use the JWT authentication. Uh, let me build the the HTTP HTTP API interface. So let me just click build, and now it will start the wizard. Uh, and you can see it is asking, uh, uh, do you want to integrate, create and uh, configure the integration? Let me just give it a name. So I'm going to call it status. This takes relations. All right, so that, that's the, I'm not going to uh, add the integration at this stage. I'm gonna do it at the end. Let's just create the API end, uh, uh, endpoint uh, for the sake of simplicity. Let me hit next. Uh, I'm not going to add any route. I'm good with that. So you can see on the top, we we still have, uh, let me just reduce the, the, the screen resolution so you can see at least the, the menu on the left side uh, with, with the, with the uh, contents on the right side. So we are on the second step where we need to configure the route. At this stage, we are not going to configure any route. Uh, we will do all this uh, step by step. So let's first create the API. Let me just click here. Yeah, we are going to create the, the default stage. And the stage is more like if you want to test the different uh, version of the API. So we have different uh, stages, like we can uh, go with the default, then we can put it into the UAT stage, and then we can uh, put it in the in the, in the the uh, production uh, stage. So that is a core concept of, you know, where we release the, the APIs uh, based on the changes or uh, 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 align with the, with the software development practices. So we, we uh, I think at this stage, we only uh, uh, need one, one stage, which is default. We are good with that. And most of the concept, I'm uh, just trimming them uh, because I don't want to comp uh, complicate thing. 
uh, in this uh, 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 series, we are just trying to to secure our Lambda function uh, or APIs uh, through through the JWT. So our core focus is how we can do it, and you're gonna see we have a bunch of uh, I would say steps to to achieve that. Uh, and if I start bringing other things in, it might overcomplicate things. So that's why I keep, uh, want to just uh, focus on on the core topic and then keep other things minimal. So let me just click next. So I think we are good. We have the API name uh, and integration route stages. We haven't configured yet, which is uh, fine. I'm going to click create just to create the API. Now, as soon as you create it, you can see the there is a successful message, and now we have our API. But it's more like you know uh, uh, a dumb me API which is unable to do anything and even if I try to open that uh, you're gonna see it won't do anything so let's see how can let me quickly uh, read my Just bear with me. I just need to auto hide the hard float. Yeah. So I think now we are good here. Yeah. So you can see message not found because there's nothing uh, attached with, with, with this API that uh, that can do anything. So our next step is going to link our Lambda function with, with this uh, API. So we, we can see how we are going to access our function that we have developed in the previous video through this API interface. So if I come in here and let me go to the route. So let me first create a route and that's going to be the get route. So that means we are going to put a get call uh, because we need to get some information from, from our Lambda function. So generally, if you want to call the, the function, which is going to return us any, any particular thing, uh, we will we will uh, put the get requests, right? So in this case, because we are calling our function, which will uh, return us some value. So we are going to create the get request. All right, so as soon as we create the get request, you can see we have the get method available. And now that that's the core part of the API gateway where you can see uh, we're gonna use uh, the, the integration and use the authorization. Now, let me quickly jump back to, to my, uh, my slide where I have actually shown you this architecture. So you can see that's that's one of the reason why I put the API gateway in between uh, uh, the the lambda function and and the cognito because the API gateway is uh, is the the bridge between these two services. Once uh, someone calls the secure API, it first extract the token. Uh, obviously, so it's get the token uh, beside that call. It send this token to AWS Cognito to validate if the token is authenticated. It's it send the uh, it uh, ask Lambda to return the the outcome, which is going to pass to the end user. If the token is failed or it's not the legitimate uh, uh, token or authentication uh, has been failed, it's not going to call the Lambda function. It just throw the error. The, the request is non legitimate. So that's why you can see it is in between uh, the Lambda function and the Cognito. And generally, the end user is going to interact the API gateway through the URL that we have recently uh, seen on, uh, on, on the browser. So that's a quick uh, uh, alignment uh, of the, of the uh, configuration step back to our architecture so now if i just jump back now first i'm going to integrate my my uh, lambda function so hit attach integration by the way you can click in here if you don't if you want to go to uh, to the integration there's another option you can hit integration and it's going to bring you to the same screen all right so what i'm going to do i'm going to create an attach an integration now as soon as i hit that i'm going to open uh, it has multiple options where you can see we have plenty of options where we can attach the AWS services uh, with the API gateway to expose to the to the external world. But in this demo, because we are securing our Lambda function, I'm going to select Lambda function 
and what lambda function I'm going to use. So obviously you can see we need to select the region where the lambda function uh, sits in that region. We just need to select and the good thing you don't need to search anything as soon as you select the lambda function and you select the region, all the corresponding uh, lambda functions gonna be filtered out and displayed in front of you and you can select them. So that's how simple it is. Obviously we're gonna grant the API gateway permission to invoke your lambda function which is super easy and straightforward. Let me hit create. So now you can see the get request uh, is linked with, with the Lambda function. Now, if I come uh, uh, go back and hit the same uh, URL again, uh, theoretically, I'm able to call the Lambda function. So that, that's the whole concept of API. API endpoint is sitting on top of the Lambda function, encapsulating all the complexity of Lambda function and giving us the opportunity to get uh, to interact with, with, the, with the function that we have developed or, or the code that we have developed. So let me come back and let me just hit enter. And there we go. You can see we have the calculated factorial A720. Just for the sake of the demo, what I will do. Let me hit that. Let me change this function uh, because I'm passing the, the, uh, the static values. Let me just calculate for seven. Let me just deploy. I'm not going to test it because what I'll do, I have changed the number in here. And now if I come in here, you can see the factorial of the number has been changed. So now you can see the way we interact. So the changes the dev made on the on the uh, the the lambda side gonna reflect automatically on on the on the API gateway. So the end user or the call-in environment doesn't need to worry about that when the changes will be implemented and how they are gonna uh, access the the latest version. Generally, if you have the URL embedded, so it will keep the the uh, the development of the the function uh, independent of the of the calling environment, which is which is an another great uh, feature uh, to speed up the process or align the process that if there are enhancement happening on the Lambda side, the end user or the call and environment doesn't need to worry about that, what they are doing. All they need to know that what call they need to make to, to get their functionality. So which is a, another concept of, you know, reusability and the flexibility uh, to, in terms of, you know, uh, 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 doing the modern uh, uh, way of software development. So I I think uh, that that's pretty much it from uh, from integrating the the lambda function uh, 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 with with the API gateway. So we hit these two part now. Uh, now our AWS Lambda function is linked with the API gateway. The next step is pretty big. Like we are going to now configure the whole AWS Cognito uh, to, to, to uh, generate the JWT token. That's why I'm going to uh, split this video into, into multi-part because in the next video, we only work on the AWS Cognito to, to configure it uh, for, for issuing the JWT token. And the, uh, the one after we are... Uh, linking the AWS Cognito with the API gateway. And then we'll see if it is going to restrict the authorization. Because remember right now, our API is, is uh, open, like uh, you can access it. So if I go back, so you can see I haven't provided anything. My API interface uh, is, is uh, open to the public. Anyone who has this URL, he, he or she can consume my, my API, right? And I want to secure it for somehow uh, uh, through the through the uh, through the authentication mechanism which we'll do as, as a as a next step so hopefully it's a small video in in the api gateway i believe you understand the core concept how the api gateway uh, integrate with the lambda function and uh, uh, i'm excited to record the next one which is the key video in setting up the the aws cognito to, to secure the, the whole uh, interaction of uh, 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 API with, with the end user. So if you have any question, please free, uh, feel free to put in the comments, more than happy to answer. Otherwise, thanks for watching and stay tuned.